Hello, and welcome to Creating in Color, sharing the creative endeavors of people of color. I'm your host, KB, and today we speak with Vanessa Marie Evans, a actress, singer, and director whose past projects include the web series Green Girl Diaries, Volume 1. Ooh. How are you today, Vanessa? I'm doing good. I'm excited to be here. Super excited to have you here. So, what is an actress, singer, and director to you? Well, to me, I would say we are storytellers in many different mediums. I would also add to that that we're also hustlers. <laughs> we have to hustle to get a job quite frequently. And we just have to be creative in our daily lives. It's such a large scope that you have as well, being an actress, singer, and director. And I know we're going to go a little more into detail about what it means for you to be a director um, as we talk about your series. But how did you start in singing and acting? You know, what's funny is I started really late. Well, at least in singing, I started really late. I started my second semester of my freshman year of college. Um, so acting wise, though, I've, I've always taken drama classes in school since junior high. So senior year of high school, we went to go see The Lion King. Uh, we went to we did a San Francisco tour, our trip, sorry. And we um, saw The Lion King tour, touring cast, and it just kind of changed my life. It was so incredible like just I was like that's what I want to do I started like leaping out of my seat like as soon as they started singing like it was just something about it like I knew I wanted to be an actress but I didn't know I wanted to be like a stage actress and I didn't know like you could even do that as a living like I grew up with Disney musicals and things like that but I didn't even know that was a thing you could do so it, it really did change my life and so then I went to college and my first semester I was like I'm gonna do business <laughs> and, but I don't remember any of the business stuff because I was also like very athletic and so I did soccer my first year or my first semester of college and that's when I learned that college sports kind of prepare you to be like a professional athlete and I was like mm. I'm not gonna do this professionally like what am I doing so I was like I'm gonna pursue this musical theater thing and that's when I started training my second semester of my freshman year of college wow that's so interesting and like you went in for business. Yeah. And did soccer. <laughs> what a switch. I, I mean, I just have to ask real quick, like, because you know, you knew you wanted to go into acting, but you did business. Was the intention to be to market yourself or was it just because it's college and people pick business when they don't know? I think it might have been that one. Like, okay. like, you know, some people pick communications. I probably would have did better in communications. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I picked business and I don't remember a thing, like, like not even, not anything. Like I remember being really bored and being like, geez, I don't understand any of this. And just, I, I don't think I got very far with that. And so I just completely switched, but I didn't take me long to realize it. Like, I mean, it only took me a semester to be like, uh, this is not working. I mean, that's, that's actually a really good time frame, to be honest. It's like, <laughs> at least you didn't get the degree and you're like, ah, crap. Yeah. So you started like your singing journey in college but you were singing beforehand I would assume right no I, what? I wasn't. um I I was musical like I did I was a band nerd a band geek I played oh clarinet, yes go, or a clarinet go clarinet right <laughs> <laughs> and so like I could read music and I could also like you know I just kind of had it naturally in my body I think that's kind of what drew me to musical theater too like I was mm. also kind of bored with the stuff on the radio and then like to hear this like full orchestrated sounds with the full choir and things like that I was just like yes it hit me on so many levels but I didn't start singing till that freshman year of college and yeah it was difficult <laughs> like, like I mean I think for me I think I always felt like I had potential and I wasn't coming in there like knowing that I knew everything I knew that I was like um you know, behind everyone else. And so I was just there to learn and soak up things. And I was, I was fearless. I, I, I still have a little bit of that, but not as much as I did back then. I definitely don't. <laughs> Honestly, thinking back to like college days, I'm like, I don't know how I did the things I did. Like yeah. I was staying up long hours and just like surviving on just cold pizza. I don't know <laughs> how anyone gets through college and have so much energy to do all these different types of things i feel that on every <laughs> level doritos for me i was just like oh, i need a bag of doritos and water let's do it <laughs> yeah that that is a feast that is a feast 
<laughs> not a big bag, a small bag. It's <laughs> <laughs> my rations for the day. Of course, of course. <laughs> and what made you want to get into directing? I'm going to just be real, very real here. Like, Do I just saw some directors, like I had directors and I was like, hmm, if this person can do that, I can do that. Because <laughs> I, I, you know, we are taught in like, because I actually, and after I went to, like I started my training, I ended up going to a conservatory in New York City. So I got fully trained in musical theater. And, um, you know, as I started like auditioning and getting into shows and things like that and building my resume, I got into some really bad shows and then I got into some really good shows and, you know, it comes and goes and you kind of see like you get these directors and um, unfortunately you don't feel very safe with them in the sense of like, you know, uh, letting your guard down and things like that. And, and some of them are really unorganized. And it just, for me, I was like, oh, geez, I can do this better. <laughs> like, just like, it really was that, like, I mean, I guess I was fearless. Or I am fearless. because I literally thought that it was just like, I can do this. So that's what, and then I think there's a need for them. And nowadays I get a lot of work because um, being a black woman, like there's a lot of people that like, oh, if you're going to be doing this show, it needs to be directed by this kind of person. And so I get a lot of work for that because I don't, in my area, there's not a lot of us around. Are you in LA or California? I'm in Orange County. You're in Orange County. Okay. I was way more in LA. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I didn't realize that like not only were there uh theater directing opportunities in the OC like excuse me, I don't go to OC I have plans to go to the Hello Kitty Cafe uh, in the future but um <laughs> I didn't realize that they had theater opportunities and not only that but they're specifically looking for like black women directors for things that should be told through a black woman's voice so I think it's fantastic that you're getting these opportunities because of that because first you are fearless like I'm and just I now think... maybe realizing this because I'm like, <laughs> who is this person? Oh, it's me. What? <laughs> I don't realize this stuff, but I'm like, that is pretty crazy. <laughs> and, and I think that's absolutely wonderful because like from what I've seen and know of you, you take chances and opportunity. You create your own opportunities. And I think it's great that like, I mean, it's not great that you saw a, cr a less organized <laughs> director and was like, <laughs> I could do that and then some, but you got inspired to do something else, which That's I think is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever have any other interests in other fields of entertainment or science or anything like that? Yes. Um, so many. Uh, geez. Like... <laughs> I okay, so I can give you probably a list. Like I wanted, probably. Oh gosh, the day before I was gonna graduate from high school, I had plans on being a chef. Like I had toured the school. My uncle was gonna buy me like knives with my name on it, <laughs> all this different stuff. But then, like unfortunately, we couldn't afford the tuition. Oh <laughs> so, yeah, that'll do it. It really did like turn everything around. So, which I mean, it worked out for the better, but, um, mm. I, and I mean, I still cook, I'm still able to cook. <laughs> so, but I want to be a chef. I often dream about being a flight attendant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like working out. So I, I love like working out. So a personal trainer working at a gym would be fun. Um, I've, I've taught musical theater to kids, which was beautiful. I feel like I do this now. So I'm a writer also. Um, so I like writing. I want to write a novel very soon. I feel like that's in the future. We're going to have to get into that. Please sure. continue. But we will dive into that. No, I mean, like, yeah, I, I think. Let me see what else. Did I am um, like on the acting standpoint, I would love to like host something like um, like a reality like travel channel show or something like that. I would love to host something like that. I that's think that'd be so, so fun. fun. So yeah, I have this like weird reality show where I go into like theaters and help them with their show because they're like they've hit like a wall and they're like we don't know what to do <laughs> and I come in and I save the production it's a weird reality tv fantasy no it's like kitchen I nightmares but with theater yes yes <laughs> I'm here for it I love it that's so good <laughs> thanks okay so this writing that you do go ahead dive in a little bit Oh, I just, I've always written things. I've, I've, 
I've written a, a not a children's book, a how-to book on how to um, direct children's theater. It's called What the Bleep? I'm Directing a Children's Musical. Because <laughs> I, I lived in that world for like three to five years. But in Orange County, it's huge here. In Orange County, County California, it's huge here. Like um, our children's productions almost outweigh our like adult productions because it's just oh. a big, yeah, it's just a big thing here. And so like the budgets for these productions that I were doing, even though it was children's theater, were big budgeted theatrical productions. And so I learned a lot from that. Um, and I wrote a book about how to do that. And then um, I wrote Green Girl Diaries, <laughs> which is 11 episode web series. I did that. And I wrote a couple musicals that I haven't done anything with yet. But um, yeah, I, I, I would like to write a fantasy novel. I think that's where I'm leaning. Oh, lovely. Mm. I just realized how much I like fantasy. I think I was like, I was watching Witcher and I was like, I like this genre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me know when you start working on that because I'd love to hear more and like potentially share it with the listeners at home. Oh, for sure. I will. Absolutely. So can you walk me through your process of going through like acting, your singing process? Uh, even your writing process, if you want to talk about it. Obviously, that's kind of a big ask, but <laughs> <laughs> to the best that you can. So acting wise, I really love getting to a character. Um, I love going on, on stage and like being fully immersed in a character like just from beginning to end. That's my goal every time I do a, a show. And it doesn't always happen, but that's my my goal. Um, and I think that one of the things I said about directors um, and not feeling safe is I don't think a lot of, not a lot of times, but there's some directors out there that don't make you feel safe enough to just completely immerse yourself in, your char in a character. You always have to keep those walls up. Yeah. And so um, to get to that point, I call this the nerdy side of acting is where you do the research and you're just like, okay, you, you read that script and you find little nuances about your character. And you also do some physicality work and you figure out how your character uh, walks, you know, um, some rhythmic speaking, like how do they talk? You know, you kind of just become that character. You make these decisions based on what you find in the script to become that character. A lot of that goes into singing, find little nuances in songs and how to bring it to life. For writing, to get started on a project for writing, like for Green Girl, it all starts with your outline. I think mm -hmm. uh, for me, like your outline is your map. And so I took a, it was at a, I think a Comic-Con. <laughs> I took a panel and I've always done an outline, but he, like this guy, like really, he was like, if you have trouble finishing your scripts, it's because you, you, you need to do an outline. And if you're doing an outline and you're still having these problems, it's because your outline's not good enough <laughs> and you need to refer back to your outline. So like, I take a lot of pride in my outline to start and I, I take a lot of time with my outline. Um, and then from there, I go into writing the, the scripts or whatever I'm writing at the time. And I don't worry about if it's good or not. Those things are always going to creep into your head. And my rule is like, just keep writing. <laughs> and then at the end, I will like, like when the whole thing, like let's say that episode or that script or that, that, that chapter maybe, or even the whole book, I go back and I reread and then I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll adjust here or there. But usually what happens is I'm like, I like it. <laughs> we just keep moving on with it. <laughs> Basically, you always take the time to research and prepare before fully diving into anything. I do. Yeah, I, I do my best to do that. Like time is definitely a, a beautiful commodity. <laughs> I, I hope that goes away very fast, but I, I try my best to definitely research. Okay. And I find it fun. Oh, that's the most important. If it's not fun, then uh-oh. Yeah. There's different types of actors, though. Some that just like, I'll come to sit and I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll just fill it out along the way because then it'll be organic. And for me, that's terrifying, but for them, yeah. it works. So that's great. Hey, to each their own. I couldn't. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about Green Girl Diaries? I sure can. <laughs> <laughs> Green Girl Diaries is a modern day parody of the musical Wicked that focuses on Elphaba's time at Shiz University. I play Elphaba Throp, titular Green Girl and future Wicked Witch of the West. Love it. What a beautiful line that was. What made you want to create a web series inspired off of Wicked? So the Lion King musical introduced me to like musicals. And then like Wicked is my favorite musical. 
I just love it. <laughs> it's such a good musical. I just, res it resonates with me in so many ways, but I've always been a fan of like stories that like twist on you. Like my favorite book growing up was the, the real story of the three little pigs or the true story of the three little pigs where it's told oh. from the wolf's perspective. I love stories like that. So to have it in a musical form for w the Wicked Witch of the West, I thought that was so cool. I always loved the music. And then like, again, <laughs> I grew up in Arizona, Mesa, Arizona, and there was often just like two black girls, me being one of them. <laughs> so I definitely like resonate with just feeling like out of place. And like, so that whole story just resonates with me. Like her story, that character resonates with me really well. And so um, how the idea, idea came about was um, I every time Wicked's in town, I go see it. And my fiance now, but at the time he's my, he was my boyfriend. He's my fiance now. Uh, he, we went to go see it together and he bought me a pair of sweatpants from the merchandise area. And it says uh, Shiz University on it. And that's the college they go to. And I was looking at them and I was just like, oh my gosh, she's in, she's in college. Like I knew she was at school. I knew she was at college, but it didn't resonate until I saw the sweatpants. Cause that reminded me of my own college experience. I was like, okay, I have my, my university's like sweatpants, you know? And I was like, she's getting into shenanigans. Like stuff is happening. Like they spent only like uh, act one at the school. And I, so I did, I was like, there's so many stories within just act one. And so I just let my imagination go wild. And, and I wrote 11 episodes about that. <laughs> That's so good. How has your process been working on the indie project? It's been good. Like it's been like eye opening and I've learned so much. Um, it's been very collaborative. Like again, I start with my outline. I go to write the scripts and then like, when you have something tangible that you like in your hand, like things start kind of gravitating towards you. And the energy with Green Girl has always been really nice. Like I, there, we've had some like ups and downs and like, you know, our challenges as with any artistic project, but I've never been like, this isn't going to happen. You know, I've never been like that. Like it's always been like, we can get through this. Once I had that script, like things would just like magically fall into my lap. It's, it was really weird. Like I got a production crew out of nowhere. I had a friend, her name, her name's Jennifer. Hey girl. <laughs> she was, I've known this girl for like years, probably going on like eight years. And then all of a sudden she's like, here's my brother. He has a production company. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't even know you had a brother. And now we're all like just really good friends. I'm really good friends with him. So his production company came in and, and, and they started like filming and, and it all came together. I casted my, um, my, fr I know a lot of actors. So I casted my friends that were, I know that are actors who would be interested in the project. And it just kind of all started coming together. Absolutely lovely. How was the casting process? Like, I know it was like a bunch of friends that you know, but like, how did the casting process feel um, as someone who has been like auditioning and ca casted for different roles and whatnot? Did it feel different being like on the other side of it or was it easy because like you kind of already knew everyone's strengths and weaknesses like what do you think so when I started Green Girl I had expectations but they weren't like they were very flexible expectations because it was such a new thing to me it's a like who writes 11 episodes and it's just like I've never had any experience doing that so I was just like let's do it so I was just I wanted people, my main thing was like, I wanted people with an open mind who would be excited to be there. I have, I know a lot of friends and that are actors and I do know a lot of like their strengths and things like that, but I really wasn't worried about that. Like, um, I don't know why, <laughs> it just wasn't. <laughs> I just knew they get the job done, you know? And so my main thing is I wanted the attitude on set and around this project to be like really nice. And so that's what I focus main, mainly on. Um, I know it's it's hard for me to speak on this because I know there's different aspects. A lot of people are like, we never had these problems, luckily, but I know people who've worked with friends and, you know, this is a, a project that that's near and dear to me. And then like a friend doesn't show up for set or something like that. And then now you're like, you have this weird dynamic with your friend. So I don't, I, but we didn't have that so much. And then on the other hand, like you can go out and you can like actually cast people. But then I've heard the same thing, like, you know, because they're not attached to the project, they they don't show up to set, you know? So yeah. it's kind of like, you gotta, 
I found with this whole project and in life in general, I'm just like ebbing and flowing. I'm just kind of like, okay, we're going to, you know, assess the problem and, and, and figure it out, you know? And so, and I try not to stress too much about it. And I just, you know, figure it out. Like we have to, we have to keep moving. And, and sometimes that requires a rewrite or something else. And we just do what we got to do. That's fantastic. I'm glad the energy is staying uh, very positive and everyone's working together in a great way. I'm currently in a situation where I asked a friend to do something and uh, she disappeared. So it's like, oh, I'll get it when I get it. <laughs> it's, it's a weird thing. Also, like kind of with like who your your fans like you know what I mean like my friends and family will watch Green Girl Diaries so, you know you would think right you would absolutely yeah. think but it's not always the case mm-hmm. like sometimes your your biggest fans are people you absolutely don't know and they they're just coming in like they're like I love it it's so great and you have like best friends that haven't even like I have a best friend who hasn't watched like any episodes and you're just like whatever <laughs> you know what I mean? like you just you can't get too mad like life is tough you know so you just kind of just deal with it I guess and you know and and if you if you just keep it light things will always like keep moving I think yeah yeah with volume two of Green Girl Diaries around the corner what difference can we see between volume one and volume two? So glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> so um, kind of not the same, but like in the sense of we left at volume one with Alphaba and Fierro um, kind of fighting, basically. They're not talking to each other. And we all, I mean, most of us know how the musical ends. They end up together. And so we get to see how that kind of starts. All right. In the first volume, they were pretty much off and on we didn't really know how they felt about each other or anything like that they were kind of like you know lovers quarrel but they're not really lovers and there's a triangle but volume two things become more clear we also introduced light ball a magical sport i created (laughs) there's a big light ball game and um we introduced some um characters at the end that we're going to hold uh after credit scene oh <laughs> so my God. more characters yeah so there's a lot of stuff happening in volume two. Ooh, very exciting and just for any listeners we are recording uh september 27th 2023 just in case so y'all need to watch volume one first yes. of all catch volume two subscribe follow like all that jazz green girl diaries let's do it You'll love it. You'll love it. You'll love it. You will you can't just watch one. You got to watch them all. <laughs> you got to watch them all. You got yeah. to. Do you recommend any support, education, or resources for anyone interested in starting an indie project or just like getting started in general in the world you know? There is so much information out there. I couldn't name just one. I do think, of course, research is important and training is important, but I don't think that should stop you, but kind of that should show you where your expectations can be. You know what I mean? If you haven't had a ton of training, maybe start smaller, you know, or if you don't have the crew that you want just yet, maybe just start smaller and just grow over time. There's so many mediums to create. And that's the cool thing about being a creator or a storyteller is that you are creative and you can make things happen out of nothing. So don't be afraid to just start, do your research, get the training when you can and start when you feel you're ready. Vanessa. Yes. What was your upbringing like? It was good. Uh, sorry, my dog is doing some crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. Um, I I have two older brothers. One is 10 years older than me. I kind I without giving away my age, I'm a, like an elder millennial. <laughs> and uh, my parents are uh baby boomers. Um so they would definitely like leave and we would stay at home by ourselves. And that was the thing. And I was just telling a friend, like my dad used to pick out, and here I go again, dating myself. He used to pick out like four VHSs for us to watch. And he'd be like, okay, watch all these four VHSs. And by the time you're done, I'll be home. <laughs> so I watched a ton of TV, a ton of TV, a ton of movies. Like I, I, I'm i not ashamed to say the TV raised me a little bit. Like I'm okay with that. And um, I also did read a lot. My brothers, they moved out pretty early. And so um, for a good like chunk of my life, it was just me. And so uh, my parents worked a lot. So I feel like I have this huge imagination. I used to like 
my, all my games were like imaginative and I could like, and they were always based on television shows. So it'd be like a lot of like, I'm Xena, <laughs> we're your princess, <laughs> I'm, I'm in Big <laughs> I'm going to save your life. It was a lot of stuff like that. Um, and I, I think back to it and like after writing Green Girl, things that I didn't struggle on, there was things that I had a tough time writing, but things that I didn't struggle on, like I, it wasn't tough for me to like, make a sequence like it wasn't tough for me to order things and like from the whole like uh season it wasn't tough for me to have a beginning and get to the end you know and and it wasn't tough for me to have a map to do that and it wasn't hard for me to do that in each episode either and I think that's because I watched so much television (laughs) so I it just came so naturally I'm like we're here we need to get there oh there needs to be this like there's a climax here and like it just like so I I think that's what happened remember they said like watching too much television would be bad yeah yeah (laughs) you showed them all wrong (laughs) (laughs) what do you feel are the next steps in your journey so I'd like to focus more on auditioning and acting. We're bouncing around the idea of a Green Girl season two. <laughs> so that that could be in the near future. We just finished up a movie called Aria Remix. Um, it is a horror comedy. <laughs> I'm excited already. <laughs> yeah, it's a horror comedy about, about a DJ who gets, um, she gets, she gets, this oh my gosh lovecrafty a monster um turns her gives her tentacles for arms and she's a dj <laughs> that's perfect yeah and our tagline our unofficial tagline is don't make it weird <laughs> so <laughs> yeah and i play a bumbling cop named morgana love it i just, I just wrapped on that they have a couple more uh shoots to go so um and then I'm kind of on a tiny, tiny little break because I'm getting married in December. Congratulations. Thank you. So that's what's up. Wonderful. You stay busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get told that a lot. <laughs> and I feel that a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As you should. <laughs> <laughs> I need a good nap. <laughs> Okay, now is the time for rapid questions where I'll ask you a series of questions and you answer them as soon as possible. Are you ready? I'm so ready. All righty. Kind of nervous. Oh, good. (laughs) What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Strawberry. Lovely. (laughs) What's your dog's name? Bella. I have a correction. Bella Donna Rose Castellanos. (laughs) Bella, 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 Bella. Yeah. <laughs> Your dog has four names. Yeah, we're extra over here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, favorite type of tea or coffee? I love coffee. Uh, I like to blend fruit and coffee. So any flavor that has like a fruit involved, infused into the coffee, I'm, I'm there for it. I have a follow-up question. Okay. Okay. How? D- mm. Hold on. <laughs> Co- coffee and fruit any particular type of fruit is it strawberry yeah kind of strawberry i've had strawberry i've had blueberry uh 7-eleven certain 7-elevens have a blueberry coffee that is delicious but i don't think enough people know about it so if you don't get there early enough it's gone and oh. then also like um i've had a rosemary orange coffee before it was delicious yeah I get a little bored with like the seasonal, like, you know, like cinnamon and hazelnut. I get a little bored with that. So I'm like fruit. (laughs) I see. I see. I see. I used to work as a barista and this one person ordered. I I was a barista at Starbucks. So I worked at Starbucks. Uh, And I I got fired from a Starbucks. (laughs) Oh, did you? I'm not a morning person. (laughs) It was really hard. You guys. Starbucks opens very early. <laughs> People want their coffee. <laughs> I know the, the one time I did an opening shift was the last, and there was legit a, an old man just banging on the door, like, You open yet? It's like, Can we have like five minutes? Just <laughs> you guys five open minutes. early. I can't even imagine. Yeah, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Uh, but one time someone ordered a passion tea with a shot of espresso in it. And I feel like you might like that. I'm here for it. I would definitely try that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was very 
it was different. And I didn't hate it, but like I made it for myself and like my coworkers, you know, like whenever we would get like a, a unique order, if you will, uh, yeah. we'd always be like, okay, we got to taste this because we got to know what that deal is. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, something to keep in mind. And if you wanted to have a Starbucks, I guess. I'm going to. I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite number? Eight. Do you have a reason why? Just like that it's even, and I like that it's like curvaceous. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Lovely. Do you believe in love at first sight? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I, no. <laughs> no. Maybe not for for some. Maybe for some. Is there yeah, a may- middle ground? Uh, you know what? Sure. There's a middle ground. <laughs> I don't know. Not for me, but maybe for someone else. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, same, same, same. <laughs> Uh, dawn or dusk? Dusk. What was your last Halloween costume? Oh, girl. Okay. I was <laughs> She-Hulk because I was getting green like every other weekend for Green uh, Girl Diaries. And so mm-hmm. I just went and bought some business clothes and ripped them up. And oh, yeah, it was awesome. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Say a word in Spanish. Um, oh, geez. Hola, buenos uh, estas. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> You caught me off guard. I got it ready. <laughs> Hola, como estas? <laughs> Wonderful. Do you want to try another language? Huh? You want to try another language? Do I want to try right like right now? Yeah. Oh, say, I don't think I do. Say a word yet. in French. Uh, baguette. <laughs> I actually know that's why I'm so sad. Okay, no, now we are on this tangent. I know a lot of Spanish. My fiance is from Honduras, or he, his parents are from Honduras. He's American, but he speaks Spanish. I am from Arizona. They've been teaching me Spanish like since I was in kindergarten. I get so nervous to speak it, and that's been my downfall. Like you just, I should be able to just rattle off a bunch of words, and I just I'm like so. It's okay. I did really catch you off guard. We have not been speaking Spanish this entire time. It's a rapid question, though. I should have been able to handle it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point, though. Don't worry. It's all good. Ask for permission or beg for forgiveness. Ask for permission. And give me a word that starts with the letter Q. No names. Queen? I do like queen, but can you give me another one? <laughs> Quintessential? <laughs> I think that's an anime I just watched. Quentin Sexual. <laughs> I can't even say it. <laughs> you know what? I like it. It makes okay. me happy. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for speaking with us today. It's been a pleasure. Do you have any social media you would like to share with us? Of course. Uh, Green Girl Diaries. We're on Facebook. We are on Instagram at Green Girl Diaries. Um, you could type in the search bar of YouTube, Green Girl Diaries, and we'll pop up. But our YouTube channel is Gargoyle Media. My socials are Vanessa Marie Evans on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And thank you, the listener, for tuning in. If you're interested in supporting Creating in Color, please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube because I refuse to call it X. And tell your friends and family about us. If you're interested in following me, you can find me on Instagram and YouTube at Maybe It's KB. Thanks to Navikaze for creating the ending theme. You can find more of his music on his SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash Namikaze. That's N-A-M-I-K-A-Z-E. If you're interested in supporting Creating in Color financially, consider a one-time or monthly donation through our PayPal or Coffee account. Oh, wait, Ko-Fi, right. They said that's not it. Uh, Ko-Fi.com slash Creating in Color. I swear, it's usually not this much of a hot mess when I do this. No, you're doing great. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, whoa, she's a big thing. <laughs> or you could consider also purchasing some Cranian Color merch on Star Range Studio. Links available via our link tree. Before we wrap up, do you have any departing words of wisdom for everyone listening? I think you should definitely support creating in color because oh. <laughs> this has been so much fun. And, um, you know, again, just start, you know, if you have a story in your heart, go on and tell it in whatever medium or form you want to. And yeah, do it. Well said. Thanks so much. This has been Creating in Color. Keep striving, keep trying, keep creating. Bye. Bye. Hey, welcome to my channel. 
The Augmented Encanted Madam Moon. Well, this book is forbidden. I think I love him. We have all sorts of people here in Oz. But what we don't have is green people. Of course I don't have any feelings for her. He is different with you. Maybe you're not doomed to a loveless life just because you're green. Your magic is so powerful, it's off the charts. I've never seen anything like it before. Magic is not something you should prove. Yeah. How limits on the fat hairs, which is neither cool nor mind. Filter, law, the wolf. How are limits on the fat hairs? I need to go to the wolf.